Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, the floor is now open. We are going to have, we will now turn to our distinguished speakers. We will have two interventions from opening the debate. And then we will come back to our speakers to continue this exchange, as I mentioned earlier. And so I turn to my first speaker, Mr. Anil Bijain. What opportunities do you see in sourcing products for the dry land or restored areas? Thank you. Her Excellency, uh, honorable dignitaries, we believe even in dryland farming, uh, the, especially the small farmers, have uh, enormous opportunity and possibility to uh, produce and supply on a remunerative basis uh, crops and produce such as a lot of fruit crops, horticulture crops, uh, which does not require too much of water, does not require great or fertile land. And they could also be growing things like spices, you know, which are more value-added products. Uh, as a company today, uh, we do buy from large number of farmers uh, things like onion or garlic, uh, various fruits, uh, other vegetables. And this has been done on the basis of providing access to these farmers about the knowledge about, uh, you know, in terms of technology also providing them access to finance and then provide them the market linkage uh, in a model where they get a base price which will give them reasonable returns and if the market price is higher for the commodities they could be claiming a price closer to the market price. So with kind, that kind of a unique model in terms of uh, contract farming and relationship farming, uh, one is able to ensure that even if farm size is small, you know in India uh, we have a large number of small farmers, almost 120 million. Uh, but and on an average farm size is only 1.18 hectares per farmer. Uh, it is possible that even with this small type of amount of land, a farmer can lead uh, remunerative farming and can also you know, earn economic prosperity which is required if it is uh, served with all. Uh, Her Excellency, uh, while we have been working and today we buy from all these farmers uh, more than half a million tons of fruits and vegetables, uh, we think a lot more can be done if we can create certain is initiatives uh, with the help of what one would call a cluster approach uh, where ability of farmers to absorb technology, uh, we, one can create a good uh, ecosystem and then these product or produce can be taken to other markets. Uh, so just to give an example, uh, we come from a region and area which is very dry. Uh, but the, we have been able to work with farmers where they can produce a lot of bananas. And today these bananas are also going into international market. Now this transformation, it has taken two decades for, for that to happen. But today in one single district, there is almost an economy of four to five hundred million dollars or about three thousand crore rupees uh, just with one single crop which is getting sold in India and also now exports. And this has been done by small farmers and without degrading the land, you know, the whole process of using certain amount of biotechnology, using drip irrigation or micro irrigation through which you provide precision agriculture uh, and, you know, you reduce the significantly the amount of chemicals, fertilizers, etc. Uh, these farmers are able to improve productivity of their land, uh, produce more, uh, earn more income and create overall larger rural uh, positive ecosystem. Also, I would like to say that, you know, in India especially, the farmers consider land as their mother. And nobody would wantingly try and do something which will hurt, you know, his or her own mother. And therefore, the, what is taking place, the desertification or land, de land degradation, is not something out of a choice. These farmers, you know, especially dryland farmers, are unable to till the land because they do not have either access to resource such as water or they do not create the second crop and get that uh, additional income. And we believe that if, you know, corporate world, business, everybody else comes together, especially the government also, one can create a system where, you know, the government can get its own return. The farmers definitely must get the return. They have the first share, I would say, of any value one would create. But one can 
generate the shared value uh, in this basis. And I can also uh, share with you, for example, uh, ex uh, we are also right now working on, for example, orange. In India, uh, not very processed oranges are not grown. And we have worked with a you know, new variety which we are giving to the farmers. And these farmers now would be growing oranges in India, which can be converted into juice and then can be sold into the uh, you know, urban and rural market. Now, that kind of possibility exists where you can create uh, the crop and service the crops with the specific technologies allocated to agroclimatic zone. A lot of times farmers end up growing something which they are, may not be aware whether it is really good or not. Productivity levels are usually low. But in some of these crops we have worked, for example, sugarcane, our farmers in India have been able to grow more sugarcane, almost 250 tons uh, per hectare, compared to even Brazilian large sugar farms. You know, Brazilian sugar farms are 100,000 acre, uh, you know, or 50,000 acre like that. In India, farm size is two or three acres. But even these small farmers are able to do world level productivity if they're guided well, and if they're given the tools of uh, technology, along with the assurance in terms of the market uh, access to what they're doing. So I would say small can still be beautiful and for the development of farmers and to create economic development, we do not need to take away anything from our land, which is a mother. Uh, in fact, we can nurture and give back more. than uh, what we take. Now, another example of this, uh, Your Excellency, in terms of work we are trying to do is that, you know, when we think about rice, uh, you're thinking, uh, you know, a puddle uh, irrigation. So, you, you know, rice is grown under the water, knee-deep water. We have experimented over the last five years to see that can you grow rice where you do not see any water whatsoever in the field. Uh, so you provide subsoil irrigation, you can save almost 80% of the water. And more important than that is that not only you, because you're providing this kind of a precise amount of water directly to the root zone, you're also stopping the, you know, the topsoil getting eroded. You know, that degrades the land. And you don't also have to use a lot of chemicals. That also degrades the land. So you avoid that. And also because you're doing this kind of uh, irrigation under the soil, you also uh, totally eliminate uh, emission of methane gases. Uh, which is, you know, so much more than even the carbon. So you can create a good ecological outcome. You can improve productivity by almost 15 to 20 percent. You can reduce the water footprint by 80 percent. You know, on an, on an average to create one kilo of rice, it takes almost 3,000 liters of water. You can reduce that by 80 percent. And, you know, that could mean a lot uh, in a country like India where almost 100 million hectares in two seasons is grown under uh, rice. Another thing uh, we are trying to do, uh, Your Excellency, is that especially for dry land farmers, it's important. Who in India, in a country like India, where there is only one crop being grown uh, with the monsoon, we are trying to see that these farmers, how they can take a second crop because they do not have access to water. So we are building this what we call integrated irrigation projects, where you can bring water from 30 or 40 kilometers different area, and instead of open canals, you bring the water through piped conveyors. And then you build the network inside the farms. And there, apart from water issue, most important also energy issue. Farmers do not have access to energy. They can't pump the water when the crops really need to irrigate. And there we have also come up with solutions of solar water pumps for these farmers. Because in a country like India, we have 300 dry days. You know, sun is always out there. And the farmers can use that uh, free uh, energy. And that allows them also to be uh, more productive. So. Ultimately, uh, I would say that when we are looking at a complete solution for the small farmer, uh, the, all the product and solutions, the entire system, has to be devised in a, on one way. To, you must mitigate the risks these farmers face. And the risk, and, you know, I think these small farmers are the biggest risk takers in the world. You know, we as businesses take risk, but I think these farmers take so much more risk than we do. And it is important to note that when these farmers are taking the risk, the product and solutions we provide to them, we should be able to ensure that there is a huge amount of risk mitigation which takes place, access to knowledge, tools of technology, financial markets, you know, in terms of the right time, right cost of capital, and then uh, linkage to the market. 
So as a company, we have been able to reach to about 7 million farmers, and we have a long way to go, you know, in terms of where one could go. And I am very pleased that this experiment, which we started, you know, my father started 60 years ago, and he, he always said mission of his life was leave this world than you, you better than you found it. And we have started to work with uh, that mission, and today we want to ensure that there is more crop per every single drop on one hand, but there should also be sustainably more income for the individual small farmers. And this is an ongoing process. A lot more can be done. We are on to it and we would like to work and cooperate any country anywhere in the world or any government or ministers uh, who have a thought process where their small farmers can become uh, prosperous farmers. That is feasible, possible, it is happening, but far more needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we've all taken out note of uh, one statement that he made, that we should leave this world better than we found it. Or we can only do that through the application, identifying the right people to deal with, uh, the small-scale farmers, look at the financial support that can be given, access to finance, and then the market, the price, and how they can sell their goods for. And all these things will support as with the attainment of uh, improving on the uh, arid land. Thank you very much.